tools plus rocks equals fossil prepping. Let's see what we have in store for you guys today. This should be a good one. Welcome back everybody and thank you for tuning into this week's episode here at Mobile Outdoor. And today I have something pretty crazy in store for you guys. And that is prepping three different fossils in one video. Now they should all go relatively quick so it shouldn't be that long of a video but also each fossil is unique in its own right and has some different things going on. So I think it'll turn out really interesting and hopefully the preps turn out the way I want them to as well. To start out we will be prepping this coral fossil. All I want to do here is pretty much take it right off the rock and I think it'll come out pretty nice. We're gonna work there along the back side and see what we can do with that. Up next we have this little chunk of rock with a bivalve fossil in it. I'm not sure if it's gonna be complete. Well, actually I'm pretty sure it's gonna be incomplete, but I'm not quite sure how much is gonna be there yet. And then if we play our cards right, we even have a few fossils right in here that we could expose. But also on top of that, we have this guy right here, which I think is just another bivalve fragment but I'm planning to try and get all of these out in one piece, or at least as much pieces as they'll come out in. I know that didn't make much sense, but you know, we'll roll with it. And then last but not least, we have this nice gastropod fossil. Now, not only do I wanna try and get this out in one piece, but we're also gonna make sure that there's nothing else um, happening down within the rock. Because I know when I've prepped gastropods in the past, sometimes you get a few more whorls out of them that are hiding underneath the rock here. So it's more than what meets the eye. But also, we have some fossil debris on this side that we're going to be looking into saving as well. So it's going to be a bit more complicated, but I think we'll be able to get the results we want with just a little extra work. So there's your lineup for today. This looks pretty interesting. So we're just gonna jump right into it. And don't worry, before each prep, I will break down each piece a little more and explain exactly how we're gonna go about working with our pieces today. But without further ado, let's get right to work. So here's the coral fossil we'll be working on again. Um, basically this is probably going to be the easiest one we do all day. All we're going to do is try to pop the coral fossil off the rest of this rock. And we're going to do that by taking advantage of the little disturbance, we'll call it, underneath the fossil here. Now, it is a little bit brittle, so we'll have to be careful not to go too hard at this and break the piece but as long as we don't do that we should be golden and i think the best place to start is going to be along this left edge so we're going to see what that'll do for us and if it doesn't work we will come back and readjust but yeah i don't see why we should have any problems so let's see what we can do So, as you can see here, we have one extra piece than what we started with, and that was not intentional. Um, unfortunately, it broke during the fossil prep. The fossil itself separated nice from the rest of the rock, exactly like I wanted it to, pretty much. 
but I think the force of it separating from the rock was enough to crack it. And although there was no visible fracture lines at the start, I think the brittleness of the rock was just enough to crack it right in half. But one thing I did want to take a closer look at is the inside of this that is now visible. And these would be the insides of the core lights. And they actually look really cool. So check that out. Honestly, I could glue this back together, but I kind of want to keep it as is. Just because it looks so cool. Let me know what you guys think down below. So I forgot to record a closer look at this piece or a breakdown before I started prepping it. And I decided to stop halfway through just because I feel like these are really uh, key in understanding what exactly is going on here. As you can see, I have made a lot of progress on this big bivalve. And it's not going to be complete like I thought it would, but it seems like we're going to get a majority of it out of there altogether. Now, one thing to notice is there's not much separation between the rock and the fossil itself. So we'll have to be careful in trying to uncover the rest of this piece so we don't break it. But since this part came off just fine, I don't see us having any issues. Now, I will say in the beginning, I did talk about getting these guys in the back out as well. But I think we're going to leave them just like that because I don't want to risk damaging this nice guy just for a couple smaller ones right here. And then as you can see, we've made pretty good headway along the top. We haven't really exposed much of it yet or any of it at all, but what we have been doing is working our way down. So we should be able to see what's underneath there pretty soon. So without further ado, let's get back to prepping this piece. So after a little bit more work, I was able to get the rest of the rock off this top piece. Now, as you can see, it's not nearly as impressive as I was hoping it would be. And we even chipped a little bit of the corner right there. But we did expose enough to, to wow, I can talk. We did expose enough to determine that this is actually more than likely a cephalopod fragment versus a bivalve fragment, just given the surface shape and the way the fossil is kind of tracking. And I might yell at myself for this later, and I'm sure a few of you guys are going to yell at me for this, but I think we're going to sacrifice this top piece here to actually finish getting to the big bivalve on the bottom. So let's go do that now. So after about putting 20 more minutes of work into it, I was finally able to get the results I was after. And good news. We didn't have to sacrifice our little fossil here that was on top. And you can really see now how small this piece actually was, which is why I was debating just kind of blowing right through it. But now we don't have to make that decision. And with the big reveal, here is our really nice bivalve fossil. Now this was pretty much complete. I mean, obviously we don't have the back side of it, but the top side is all there. I did scratch it a couple times with the pick because I got a little greedy and was trying to get the last little bit of matrix off the surface. So that is entirely my fault. 
I should have just left it as is. But this does have a nice presentation to it. And we've even got another fragment right there by my thumb, which we were able to uncover at the same time. But this is indeed our first successful fossil prep of the day. So let's hope the third one goes just as well. So here is our third and final rack that we will be prepping today. And as you can see, we have that nice big dash pot on top. But also, we have a few articulated crinoid stems and a brachiopod fragment on this side that I want to preserve as well, which I'll show you now. So yeah, those are pretty neat. And I believe we can get more of this gash pot out and still keep these intact at the same time. And we have a few lines that we can start working along here. One of them being right on this corner. It goes about like that. And then the other line we could also choose to work along is right here. And I'm thinking I want to leave that alone for right now just because it's so close to their smaller fossils. But the line that I'm really interested in occurs right along here. The reason why this interests me so much is because I can do a lot of work from this area without posing too much risk to the fossils on top or the gastropod on the other side. And it'll kind of give me an idea of how the rock is going to behave before I try anything too risky with the fossils. Oh hey, look at that. We even have a bivalve fragment right here. So without further ado, let's get to work. So I've only been prepping this piece for about five minutes, but I've already come across some interesting things. The first one being that it appears this rock is fracturing off in relatively straight lines, which is kind of odd, or at least I've never come across that before in any of my fossil preps. And then the second one being is that this gastropod definitely has nothing left to offer underneath the rock because as you can see if it did we would be running into it on this face but there's nothing there and then before i stopped prepping i was starting to work on this bivalve fossil but i didn't really like the way this piece was breaking because i didn't want to mess with what was going on over on this side so I'm really at a standstill here on this piece until I understand more about what this rock is trying to do or should I say how it's fracturing so for that reason I think I'm gonna hold off on prepping the rest of this fossil until I figure out more about this rock if you guys know anything Feel free to let me know down in the comments below, but I will also be doing my own research on it as well. And then, once I am comfortable resuming this prep, I'll just do another video. It'll be like a part two. So, that about does it for today's video. I want to thank you all for coming along with me on this. I know doing three fossils in one video is kind of a lot, but if you liked it, let me know down below and I'll do more double and triple fossil prep videos in the future. And like I said, that last fossil prep is still kind of pending. So hopefully we get some answers on that piece as well. But until next time, stay safe and rock on.